In this video, we'll see some examples of how to answer various questions given a graph of a function. So our example graph looks something like this. Remember that each of these ordered pairs, whenever we see 4, 3 here, what that means is that when you plug 4 into your function, f of 4 turns out to be 3. So keep that in mind as we go through the different examples that we're going to look at. So first question is, what are the x-intercepts of our function f? Well, x-intercepts are places where the graph crosses the x-axis. And in this case, we see three of those. So we've got 1, 2, and 3. Now, if they had asked us how many x-intercepts the graph has, our answer would be 3. But they actually asked us, what are the x-intercepts of f? And there's two different ways we could answer this question. So the x-intercepts are the actual points where the graph crosses the x-axis. So we could write negative 3 comma 0, 6 comma 0, and 10 comma 0. And that would be a perfectly fine answer to our question. But since we're talking about x-intercepts, we know that the y-coordinates of each of those points is going to be 0. These are points where we're crossing the x-axis, and on the x-axis the y-coordinate is always 0. So a shorthand for this is we might just say that the x-intercepts are those x-coordinates, negative 3, 6, and 10. So either one of these is a, a fine way to answer this question. Okay, what if we're asked what the y-intercepts of this function are? Well, the y-intercepts are the places where the graph crosses the y-axis. And since our graph represents a function, our function has to pass the vertical line test, which means our graph can have, at most, one y-intercept. Sometimes the graph won't have any y-intercepts at all, but this one does have one at the point 0, 3. And just like before, there's two ways that we could answer this question. Our y-intercept could be thought of as the point 0, 3. Or, since we know a y-intercept will be on the y-axis, and on the y-axis our x-coordinates are always 0, we could simply write down what the y-coordinate is, in this case, number 3. So two different ways to answer the question to give the same information. What if we're asked to compute f of 4? Well, again, as we said before, if we want to know what f of 4 is, what we're looking for is a point on our graph where the x-coordinate is 4. And then the corresponding y-coordinate will be what we get when we plug 4 into our function. So in this case, we've got the point 4, 3. And the point 4, 3 being on our graph is just another way of telling us that when we plug 4 into our function, what we get out is 3. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So if we had wanted to know what's f of 8, let's say that was the question that was asked. Well, f of 8 would be the y-coordinate of a point on our graph where the x-coordinate is 8. In this case, we've got the point 8 comma negative 2. So that means that when we plug 8 into our function, negative 2 is what we get out. All right, what if we were asked what, whether f of 7 is positive or negative? If we look at our points on our graph, we don't actually see any listed ordered pair that has a 7 as its x-coordinate. But we can still answer this question. We can go to 7 on our x-axis, and if there had been a point with a 7 as its x-coordinate, this is where it would be. And so we can tell some information about this point. We don't know exactly what the y-coordinate of this point is, but we do know that it's going to be somewhere in between 0 and negative 2. The y-coordinate of this mysterious point will be between the y-coordinates of the points that it's between. And so we can know for sure that the y-coordinate of that point is some negative number. We don't know what negative number it is, but we do know that it's something. So this is 7 comma some negative number. And since that's all the question was asking, is this y value positive or negative, we know that the answer to our question is that it's negative. One last example. How many solutions does the equation f of x equals 1 have? Another way to ask this question is, how many points on this graph have a y-coordinate of 1? Well, at first it might seem that the answer is only one point, because we only see one of these ordered pairs that has a 1 in its y-coordinate. However, there are a couple other points that have a y-coordinate of 1. They're just not listed explicitly. We can think about drawing a horizontal line at y equals 1. And any time this horizontal line crosses our graph, we'll get a point where the y-coordinate is 1. 
Now we might not know exactly what the x-coordinate of those points are, but we can tell how many of them there are. There's going to be one over here, right around negative 2, x equals negative 2, and there's going to be one over here, right around somewhere between x equals 5 and x equals 6. So again, we don't know the exact x-coordinates of those points, but we certainly can tell that there's going to be two other points on our graph. And so the answer is that there are three total points. So don't get fooled into thinking that the only points on the graph are the ones where you have listed x and y coordinates. The entire graph, this entire thick blue line here, that's the whole graph of our function. You want to think of the points where the coordinates are listed as simply the highlights, the maybe more interesting points, but all the other points are all still there.